So I am Dr. Deborah Wilson and this is Dr. Tom Walliser and we're here to talk to you about menopausal hormone replacement therapy. We often get the question from patients, do hormones cause cancer? And it seems to me that in the media uh, we see the statement that hormones cause cancer frequently. Do you, do you get that question? As right, well? that's the biggest uh, concern that patients will ask me about is the cancer risk. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because in reality, if you look at the, the literature, the only real cancer risk is that of the Women's Health Initiative study. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And they used... Yeah, they used that very old progesterone called Provera. Yeah. I'll that learn. I guess in some where they were trying to grow cancer cells, it actually grew in Provera. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And the other types of progesterone, especially the bioidentical, um, they get any growth in it. That's interesting. I didn't see yeah. that study, huh? Yeah. Well, they also use equine estrogen, which, you know, to me, of course, I'm an animal rights person, and so equine mm -hmm. estrogen is very cruel to the horses, and, and it's not at all bioidentical. I mean, equine estrogen is for horses and right. not people. So, so the current literature, from what I understand, is that bioidentical particularly if it's just estrogen, doesn't have any, doesn't uh, impart any increased risk of... of right, I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's exactly what your body used to produce. Mm -hmm. The pellets, it's interesting to me because I started doing pellets probably almost 15 years ago because a patient came to me from Australia and said, you know, I'm, you're my new gynecologist, I'd like to have my pellets. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard of pellets. So I had to do some research and I found one company in New York that sold mm -hmm. uh, pellets and I ordered them. So I probably had just five or six pellet patients for a few years and then all of a sudden it's taken off. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you see as the biggest advantage of pellets? Um, I like how it's a slow release. Mm -hmm. um, you do an injection of the pellets into the buttocks and it can last three to six months and people feel almost immediately better. Well, it takes about a day, but they feel really good after that. They, their energy's up. Mm -hmm. um, they feel themselves again. And what I like is they can go up to six months, mm -hmm. um, but they can also tell when their levels are starting to drop, you know? And so they self-regulate. Mm -hmm. And then they come in when they're starting to feel bad, we check their hormones, and then we can tell how much we need to give them again. Yeah. And then they're gone again. Right. You know, they don't have to worry about remembering a patch or running out of a prescription. And mm -hmm. It's just easier and more convenient for the patient. Yeah, I think so. I mean, particularly, in my experience, particularly for the patients who want to be sexually active, I don't know any other combination of estrogen and testosterone that really does rejuvenate that desire for sex, that... Uh, that orgasmic capacity, the uh, you know the level of enjoyment of sex that they had before, um, the pellets are the only the only solution to that problem that I've really found. Mm -hmm. You know the the creams the creams make a little bit of a difference, and for some women that's fine. And the trochees make a little bit of a difference for some women that's fine. Yeah. Patches the same thing, but. For a patient who wants to be sexually active, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I've almost stopped trying anything else. Right. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but we do offer, in this office, we do offer creams and trochees and gels and patches and even pills, although I personally don't like to use pills. What's mm -hmm. your feeling about it? Yeah, I like to avoid the pill just because it bypasses the liver, which mm -hmm. can affect your cholesterol levels and mm -hmm. other medications and so I like to avoid that pass effect through the liver yeah I mean the, the pills pass through the liver mm -hmm. and raise yeah they raise fibrinogen right yeah the clotting factors mm -hmm. yeah so I mean it, it was my impression that the increased risk of stroke and heart attack in the women's health initiative study was because they were using oral Correct. estrogens and progesterones yeah. yeah 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 I don't think you see that with the patches or the creams no. Or the pellets. Yeah, I mean, I have patients come in often who say, mm -hmm. you know, my cardiologist doesn't want me to be on estrogen, but, um, you know, I wonder if 
I wonder if they've really read the literature because to mm -hmm. me, the only increased risk of stroke and heart attack, the only cardiac risk that I can see in the literature is from oral estrogen, right. not the transdermal estrogen. Mm -hmm. And transdermal would be pellets and patches and gels, mm -hmm. and, you know, all those sorts of things. Yeah, I hardly ever use pills. I mean, some patients come in and they like their pills and they've been on them for years and you know, so we just leave them on them. But right. uh, yeah, well, you know, the pellets, the pellets really have taken off. They've become incredibly mm -hmm. popular in many parts of the country. Right. I even have people, you'll see some of the patients even fly in from other states mm -hmm. to come and get their pellets. Yeah, because I, I think the vast majority of the country doesn't even have access to pellets. They don't. So I think mm -hmm. it's great that we have that capability here. Yeah, yeah. No, only the big, from what I see, only the big cities. Uh, mm -hmm. offer doctors in the big cities offer pellets but there's some there's a market pressure going on too I think right. because you know patients want pellets mm -hmm. and uh, and they want to go to a doctor who can offer them pellets and a doctor is not afraid to offer them hormone replacement therapy yeah um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. in conclusion we want our patients to know that that most patients are candidates for hormones, that hormones in general don't cause cancer, that there are many possibilities, many modalities. Uh, we can offer creams, we offer gels, we offer sublingual trochees, we offer patches. So there are many different options for patients who are interested in menopausal hormone replacement therapy, interested in, in no more hot flushes, no more night sweats, no more insomnia, increased sex drive, no more headaches, um, and generally uh, a better feeling of well-being. Because menopause, some women breeze through menopause and it's no problem at all, but um, many women really do suffer with menopause. They feel fatigued, they feel depressed, and, um, and there are solutions to that problem. We offer many different solutions. Um, Probably in our practice, in our particular practice, these time-released uh, subcutaneous pellets are the most popular. But uh, but we also have many patients on other types of hormone replacement therapy. So feel free if you are menopausal and you are experiencing symptoms that are getting in the way of your normal functioning, getting in the way of your sex life, getting in the way of uh, your feeling of well-being, to come in and talk to us about hormone replacement therapy.